Uh, welcome to this next video of the assembly of my Lotus Elan Series 2. Um, this video will cover uh, a bit more of the interior trim, um, some foam buffers that I missed um, on the assembly of the doors, and also starting to set the engine up, um, so the distributor and setting the timing up, um, getting close to being able to start it. So, a bit more on that. Doors off again. Um, somebody pointed out to me that I'd missed something when they saw one of the videos. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, this piece of foam, I'd got them, but didn't really know uh, where they were supposed to go. And it seems they're supposed to glue here, I think. Close to there. Um, and it acts as a door buffer. There's no door catch strap, as it were, to hold the doors in the open position. So you end up with the fibreglass just pushing up against the fibreglass. So the idea is these are trapped between the door and the body and will get squashed as the door opens and, and just give it a bit of buffering, I suppose. Anyway, these ones are the originals. I think the foam's probably much um, weaker than it would have been when it was new. So I'm going to make them out of some new foam that I've got glue them in place. I have glued in a couple of bits of foam um, which make up the original, the depth of the original. So put the door back on, see what difference it makes. This is the area on the door it's going to push up against. So doors back on and now this is what happens. Oh it bounces back. So it does make a difference quite a considerable difference. quite like it, apart from, slightly concerned, that it'll just fill up with water. But I suppose the action of the door. You can just see the foam down there. The action of the door might squeeze it out, if it did. Um, managed to get the door alignment pretty good again. So, pretty satisfied with that. There's a piece of aluminium trim that runs around the back of the cockpit area. Here's the original, um, which is a bit scruffy. And I managed to get a piece with the new correct section. So I'm going to bend up a new piece, but I need something to help me get the right shape. Uh, I've put this piece of wood on the car and just marked underneath, so I'm going to cut it out as a template. Using various cardboard templates and transferring it onto this. Weird shape. These are the two sections of aluminium, the existing, the original and the new. Um, pretty good to me. The new one is supplied by uh, Woolies in the UK. I've made a start bending it around the template. I'm sure it'll need tightening up a little bit because this is um, on the outside of this template. So I've got the thickness of the aluminium to take into account. Uh, that's worked pretty well. Fortunately the aluminium is quite soft, so will be manipulated. So I think the next thing to do is to drill some holes and fix it at the back and then work out the side parts from there and cut it to length. This is the original aluminium strip and these are the original fixings, um, which are a countersunk posi head. Let me just show you these screws that are what they fix into. These are the original fixings. It's a screw that fixes into a nut that's encapsulated in the rubber. Quite a big hole in the body and then the idea is it just, as it tightens, squashes the rubber out. Um, I can't find any of these sizes, but I have found these ones which go in the same size hole, they're obviously a lot longer. Um, they're M4 and I've got an M4 posi countersunk screw to go in them. So they'll have the same effect. Um, the screws, similar length actually, but the head of the new ones is clearly a lot bigger. However, I am going to use them. so. Show you the fittings in the bottom. So that's the fitting, I mean, just these are the original 
holes, I haven't lost those holes. Um, so they're just shoving. We've got this aluminium trim fixed in place now. Mm, tricky to do and um, the car's clearly uh, not symmetrical. You can see the trim is closer at that side than it is at that side. It's not just because I'm stood at this side. I'll go around the other side. See it gets closer at this side. Um, the slope of the body seems uh, shallower somehow at this side so it's difficult because this angle wants to naturally pull in as you fold this round so I've had to give it a bit of grief in the vice to get it to go back um, without trying to kink it or mark it anyway yeah 90% happy with that I've uh, got the radiator back I had it modified to fit the cooling fan and this uh, thermal switch um, I put the cooling fan on, I asked for the cooling fan to be put there to avoid all this stuff down here. But I think I probably a mistake because it's going to tend to blow the warm air across to where the carburetors are. It would have been better here, I think, on the exhaust side. Um, however, the size of the fan, there is room for a second one, so maybe that's the way to go. Um, we'll see. I'll get it running and just check temperatures and decide what to do later for that I think. Anyway it's fixed, there's two studs at the bottom that go through the holes in the fiberglass that you may have seen earlier just with big washers, simple as that at the bottom, nothing else and then at the top just this pipe, um, which is probably why it had this aluminium section in, that's the original I just polished up. Um, and that's all that stops the radiator from moving backwards and forwards remarkably it's pretty pretty stiff you can see the rubber going slightly and then there's a drain tube that runs down that's the original um, and it runs down through some little flip arrangements and just goes through a hole in the bottom the same hole that I've used for this um, vacuum pipe so I think that must be the original purpose of that hole it stops a bit short and it looks as though it's going to let water triple over the running gear down there so I might extend it just to clear the water from the chassis really. Um, yeah. uh, I've also fitted the wiring for the electric fan down here next to the air horns so just down there there is a relay um, I put an extra little bracket in to stop the compressor vibrating about as well and I've used the same fixings to fix the relay. So there's an, um, a relay that will be switched by the thermostatic switch um, and there's main power then, fused power that comes to the electric fan. I've also fitted an override switch which was part of the wiring loom. Um, they put in extra cable so I could put a switch in which I have sussed out how to do. In fact I'll show you my wiring diagram. So this is my wiring diagram. Um, <clears throat> so I've got an override switch behind the dashboard on this extra cable, pink cable, which I've then taken to earth, which is positive in this case. Um, and that goes to the same contact on the relay coil as the radiator thermal switch, which also goes back to earth. I've used this well, these are these blocks here represent connectors. Um, bit of a scruffy diagram, probably. Um, and then we get the green positive fused feed into the coil. So it's either switched to earth through the thermostatic switch or the override switch, whichever goes uh, is switched. It will run the fan, and then the fan itself um, is connected through the main relay contact. So there's a neg brown, thick brown negative which came in and then I'll just put some extra connectors in so I can connect it up to the relay and the thick uh, black positive earth which comes into the fan. So there we go. Here's the job that I should have done years ago really. I'm just taking the distributor to bits. Um, it's a Lucas distributor and checking to see if there's any movement um, 
or movement that shouldn't be sideways of this shaft relative to the body so I'm trying to move the body sideways and I'm pretty happy as um, there isn't any none that, none that I can feel anyway probably maybe there is but sort of very 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 small amount but nothing wobbly um, so that's quite pleasing uh, I've got the distributor uh, back together. I've stripped it apart and cleaned it up. There is no discernible play in the um, the shaft coming up the middle. So pretty happy. I've set the points gap. Um, if anyone can remember how points operate. Um, anyway, I've set the gap over to the book. Not sure if that's the correct distributor rotor arm. This was the one that was on it. Um, so anyway, I've got both now. New condenser. And just looking at the book to see which is the correct firing order. So this seems pretty useful. Um, so I think we're looking down on top of the distributor cap. I assume. So the firing order is one, three, four, two, I think. So there we are. There's the firing order. One, three, four, two. So just working out, um, I've got to insert this in the correct direction and get the rotor arm in the right place so that it's going to be um, number one cylinder igniting when uh, the first cylinder's at top and centre. So I'm just turning over the engine um, with a socket down there on the crank pulley. Um, so I've got number one cylinder coming up to the top of its compression firing stroke. So these two cams are pointing outwards. Um, so this inlet they're rotating in that direction. So the chain's moving that way. Um, so this has just closed that valve and then it's come up the stroke once this valve is closed. So that's its compression, compressing the fuel and air mix. So that um, should be at the top. Ooh, you can see it in there. Um, so it's coming up to top dead centre. So I'm just going to use a dial gauge um, just to find exactly where top dead centre is. Um, and I will also note that on the front cover timing mark so I know where top dead centre actually is. So I borrowed this dial gauge off Richard, thank you, and it was Richard who reminded me about the cam low positions for number one on compression. So I've got that extending down touching the top of the piston and I've just wound it up until that needle has stopped rising and it just pauses briefly before it drops back again. So that is as near as I can get it on top dead centre. Uh, and hopefully you can see these are the timing marks uh, and on the cam cover there you might see it says TDC top dead centre and I've put a bit of white paint in the notch on the flywheel that should indicate when those two line up that should be top dead centre and it's pretty close. Um, oh, that helps if I put it into shadow there a bit you can see the mark a bit clearer ironically. Um, so yeah, it's not far off correct. Um, the other marks are 10 degrees before and 20 degrees before, which you'd use with a timing light um, when you're adjusting. You twist the distributor around to move where it's firing. Um, so there we go, that's what the timing marks for. And you use a stroboscopic light uh, in the first cylinder first line to, the, line to the first spark plug so it's lighting up as the first spark plug is firing. I've set the engine to 7 degrees before top dead centre by using that tiny mark on the pulley and then I've shoved the distributor in um, with this rotor arm pointing more or less at 9 o'clock as you're looking at it. So when you push it in because the, the gears it turns 
So that's now opposite the contact point for number one, which is at this sort of 45 degree position here. Um, and I've set the timing of the distributor by rotating it until the points here are just opening um, at 7 degrees before top dead centre. I've only done it by eye using a very bright light and just align myself with the points and see when the gap just opens. So not the most accurate, but it should be enough to get it going I think. And then we can do the timing once the engine's running more accurately. Um, just received this, I didn't realise I was missing this part, but this is a tube that runs from the breather um, and must fix somehow, maybe to the gearbox, I'm about to find out anyway. And let me show you where it goes. There is a rubber, where is it? there it is, a rubber breather tube elbow and it's going to go into the bottom of that and just get a light. And so there's the rubber breather tube, tricky to see. Um, but it's, that pipe is tube pipe, whatever it is. Breather pipe has got a plug into the bottom of there and fixes onto some parts further down. Uh, I've got the breather pipe fitted, you can see it down there, the black um, the light around. It's to one of the gearbox bolts at the top, at the back, clearly at the back, at the top of the engine on this side and onto one of the flanges or ribs on the gearbox. Um, I'll just see if I can dive underneath and show you. Well, there it is at the bottom. Maybe you can fix, see it fixed to the uh, flange on the gearbox and it just sort of sticks out under the car. I've also repainted the cam cover with um, a blue that I think is much closer to the original, looking at some old early photos. Um, so very happy with that, polished up their letters on the top. Um, so yeah, much happier. I'll show you the paint. Um, bought it from uh, Team Deville. Um, it says Lotus Cortina Elan cam cover paint. Um, a little sample colour on the top, um, which they've obviously had mixed up um, against an original, I believe. So I tried a hammerite blue, which I wasn't happy with. Um, it was too dark, and I think this is closer to an original hammerite, hammerite blue that they no longer do, um, which I remember from my school days. So very happy with that. Now I've got the distributor cap wired up. Um, with spark plug leads I've gone for the arrangement where you feed them around and bring them in through the hole at the back. It's the style that's shown in early um, photographs. Um, so that's what I've gone for. And I've got the um, round oil filler cap as well which um, I was gifted by a very good friend Brian. Um, so yeah, coming on. Carburettors to go on. Um, oh, and I bled the brake and clutch as well, so they seem to operate. And we've got a radiator cap, so I can fill that with water and I can fill the engine with oil. Um, and I could have a go at starting it. Oop. I fitted the air filter in the um, uh, box down there, air filter box, and fitted this flexible um, tube hose which brings the air up to the carburettors. Um, so I've got the carburettors fitted to the engine. Now I'll just zoom in a bit. They fix with these uh, Thackeray washers which are like a double spring. I'm not sure I've got them tightened up enough yet but uh, you can see them and there's a plate here with o-rings either side so that's what gives the a seal between the head and the carburettors. So maybe be able to see um, that the carburettors can move slightly. Not sure that's very obvious. Um, but those spring washers allow the carburettors to move and the, the idea is um, it somewhat damps the vibration of the engine from the 
fuel inside the carburetors, I believe that's the idea. And then there's this airbox which fits on, I haven't got it fixed yet. Um, it's got a bracket that runs off it that's going to hold the end of the accelerator cable, which is going to allow the accelerator pedal to pull those. And, <coughs> and inside the airbox goes some trumpets, I'll just grab one. So these fit into the carburetors. Just get rid of this. And then they get held by the bolts. There's some little plates. I'm just going to get them. So these little brackets, plates, hold those. In. Oops. Like that. They're not quite flat, so they grip. the idea is they grip these are horns and they just fix on with a locking washer and a nut. So I'll get that. So that's the airbox fitted with its rubber seal. Um, fixed it onto the flexible um, big pipe. Duct. Duct. Perhaps a better name for it. Um, that runs down to the where the air filter is and this has one fixing screw um, bolt I think it is that runs through the back plate picks up on that bobbin to hold that on. <coughs> I've also fitted the accelerator cable so that's hooked up to the accelerator pedal and that's going to operate the uh, butterfly valves in the carburetors. It's got a return spring that runs down there. Just use the old one. Seems to be okay. That's the choke cable. It's a bit messy. Well, cold start cable. There should be some little fixing screws in there. I'm not sure if there should be a bit of outer that runs there just to tidy that up. But I didn't have it. So, the cam cover's not screwed down yet. That has rubber, some rubberized washers that seal here. And I'll use some well seal to just seal that gasket both sides. And then I can put oil and water. Yeah, scary. I could try turning it over, seeing if there's any oil pressure, and even try starting it to get some fuel for that, of course. Okay, good. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, maybe the next one might be starting the engine. That's very scary. Um, and probably more trim. I've got the doors and the seats still to finish. Patches to go on, bumpers to go on. Getting there though. <laughs>